Well, the top contender as far as the World Boxing Association and the World Boxing Council is concerned, he is the number one man, and that means a title shot is just around the corner. But first things first, tonight there's Jose and Gulo. Jose stands in the way of Bumpus tonight, and Bumpus takes them one at a time. Not long ago, we talked about the climb up the boxing ladder and his goals in this sport. I would like to... Uh win the junior welterweight title which is going to be happening pretty soon defend it a few times and then challenge the welterweight champion because uh, as you know I have the, the, the height and the frame to be a welterweight and uh, winning three world titles is my goal let's look at Aaron Pryor you are much taller than Aaron Pryor he comes on strong right. he can put you away well, Aaron Pryor, like you say, he comes on, he just throws punches from nowhere. Uh, I think the lateral movement will be the same thing with him. And uh, my defense is, you know, real good. George has taught me everything as far as the defensive aspect. And I think that's going to help me a lot. And the fact that Aaron doesn't have a defense and, you know, I'm punching real good now, I think that'll be a big factor also. You have... Excellent, excellent speed, quickness. Is there anything about your style? You just mentioned the fact you're learning a lot about defense now. But is there anything about your style, your attack, that you would feel more comfortable about if it were better? Uh, the only thing that I was, you know, doubting was my body punching, but now that I've learned to settle down and rip, you know, rip those body punches in there, I don't really see anything. The only thing I can say is that maybe I can polish a few things up, but I think everything is superb, and when the time comes for me to show it, it will be ready. You're a dedicated fighter. Right. Very much so. You're probably the type of fighter that really that could almost be left to his own designs as far as training is concerned. He would be no problem. Right. Uh, I think a fighter that has to have somebody constantly on his back, you know, making him not do the things that he shouldn't be doing, you know, really doesn't have the dedication to uh, be a fighter. If you want to be a fighter, you're going to have, you're going to do the things that are right without, you know, somebody having to push you into doing it. Where did you learn that dedication and discipline? Where did that come from? Back in your childhood? Well, I guess, I guess so. It came, you know, with all the years of boxing that I had in the amateurs and, you know, just knowing what I have to do and uh, knowing what could happen, you know, if I don't do the right things. Johnny, let's go back to the Michael Bradley fight. A fight in which you got knocked down for the first time. Right. Uh, when I got knocked down, it was more surprising than I was hurt because next thing I knew I was hit and the next thing I knew I was getting up. So it's surprising more than hurting because I was, you know, my mind was, you know, I knew what was happening and everything. And then when I got up, I said, hey, I got to take care of this. It's rather embarrassing. So it was a good lesson, maybe. Right. Because uh, I went into the Bradley fight, you know, with the idea that I could just go in and knock him out. You know, just going in like I was a puncher rather than the quick-handed boxer that I am. I want to leave a mark on boxing, so, you know, when I finish boxing, everybody will, you know, say Johnny Bump was, you know, was a great fighter and possibly become a member of the Hall of Fame or something of that nature. Well, back on September the 9th, as a prelim to the prior Arguello affair out in Las Vegas, an outstanding fight took place between Rocky Lockridge and Cornelius Boza Edwards. After Rocky was knocked down in the first round, he came back to score a unanimous decision over Mr. Boza Edwards. A tremendous fight. With that in mind, we are extremely pleased to welcome to our broadcast team tonight uh, during the Johnny Bumpish fight, Rocky Lockridge himself. Rocky, welcome. Thank you, Steve. Well, it's a pleasure to uh, take part with uh, the commentary in this particular bout. I look forward to uh, many more comments to be with you on the commentary. Well, Rocky, it's appropriate that you're here to watch the, the Bumpus fight because uh, on September the 9th, Bumpus was, so to speak, in your corner, although he was ringside uh, during the Boza Edwards fight. So we're happy you're here. We'll be happy to hear your expertise. Let's go to the tail of the tape right now. Involving the Johnny Bumpus Jose Angulo fight, you can see the height, it's all even at six feet. Slight uh, weight advantage for Angulo, 
And the reach is identical. The records in the ring, Johnny Bumpus undefeated 20 and 0, 15 knockouts, and Jose Angulo 16 and 2, 10 KOs. Let's go to the corner of Jose Angulo, the Colombian junior welterweight champion, and earlier we had an opportunity to get the feelings of Angulo through his uh, interpreter and trainer, Woodrow Wilson Larasso, who tr translated Jose's comments. You see, he realized that Johnny Bumpers is one of the great fighters of his exhibitions, Raider fighter, and he feels that this opportunity is a great opportunity for him to become a contender, to beat this, this fighter, so great a fighter, and he's ready for it, and he wants to prove to everybody that he is a good fighter, and not because the public don't know him, he's just, he will see him tonight and he will show how good he is. Let's go up to the ring announcer, Ed uh, Darian, for the introduction. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a scheduled 10 round junior welterweight non-title bout. The judges, Frank Brunette, William Kostrov and Ray Hoagland. The timekeeper to Bell is Roy Johnson. Counting for the knockdown seconds, alternate referee Frank Cappuccino. In the ring at this time, the man in charge of the scheduled 10 round junior welterweight bout, referee Zach Clayton. And now boxing fans, introducing the principals. First, in the red corner, wearing the white trunks with the blue, red and gold trim, he weighed in at an even 141 pounds. This gentleman has a record of 16 wins, 2 losses with 10 knockouts. He is currently the junior welterweight champion of Colombia. Ladies and gentlemen, from Colombia, Sur America, let's welcome Jose Angulo. Angulo. And his opponent in the blue corner, wearing the white trunks with the red and blue trim, he weighed in at 140 and one half pounds. This young man is undefeated in 20 professional bouts with 15 knockouts. He is ranked number one by both the World Boxing Association and the World Boxing Council and is currently the USBA Junior Welterweight Champion, a native of Tacoma, Washington, and now residing in Clementon, New Jersey. Boxing fans, here is Johnny Bump City Bumpus. Bumpus. I understand Jose do not understand English, so you go translate the, the rules in relation to him. In the event of a knockdown, which is important, the fellow scoring the knockdown must go to the furthest corner and state that he's still the reason fighting. The boxer getting knocked down must take an eight-second count, kneeling or standing. It makes no difference. When I tell you men the break, I want you to hold your punches and step out of there. But protect yourself coming out of the clinch. Cuando hagan break, el diga break, te separas, levantas tus manos limpiamente, echa para atrás, pero con tus manos arriba para protegerte. Shake hands now and come on fighting to the bell. Good luck to both. So, uh, nicely done by Woody Larasso, translating bilingual introductions. There's Johnny Pump, City Bumpus on the right of your screen, Jose Angulo on the left. As we get ready for our main event, scheduled for 10. <laughs> Round one, Zach Clayton is the referee. And right off the bat, uh, we should make note, Rocky and Arthur, that it's interesting. Two southpaws staring each other in the eye. Well, you beat me to it. I was going to just say that. And it's going to be very interesting just to see the strategy that both corners employ. And Rocky, uh, I, you know, you're very, very eloquent. Besides being a good boxer, I'd be afraid to have you back again. You might take Steve's job and mine. <laughs> I wouldn't think of it either. <laughs> Rocky Lockridge, who grew up with Johnny Bumpus, did you in Tacoma, Washington? Yes, I did, Steve. Uh, in fact, uh, we consider ourselves the T Connection. We're both uh, originally from Tacoma, Washington. We started our career in Tacoma, Washington, and at this point in our career uh, now, we're fighting out of New Jersey. 
in the Lou Duva stable. I know you fellows are very close, so you'll uh, have a keen and vested interest in this fight. Well, I attended a wedding in uh, both Johnny, of course, and Rocky with the wedding with their very lovely and charming wives. You fellows are very, very close, and it's real wonderful. It's just such good friends and in the same stable. Well, the WBA has ordered Aaron Pryor to sign within 30 days as of September the 10th. In fact, to update that, the Bumpus camp uh, received a telegram today. They got the papers that Pryor must defend uh, by October the 2nd, the WBA Junior Wonderway Championship. So it'll be interesting to see uh, what is forthcoming. Early in the top of the show, Steve, you had asked me a question about Johnny, and I said that he was a southpaw, but not only that, a very, very good southpaw. And you can see how fast, how quick he is. He's got a tremendous right jab, and the, I understand, and I've seen him throw a tremendous right uppercut right hook. Right, Rocky? No question, Arthur. He's looking very devastating at this point. He's looking stronger than I've ever seen him before. He's uh, quick-handed like you had spoke on, and uh, he's ready. He's ready for Aaron Pryor or anybody else. And to add to his repertoire, he cites defense as his chief asset. Tremendous defensive fighter. Is that right? Of course, as we said again, he's number one ranked with the WBA and the WBC. And in boxing, they often refer to tune-up fights. Uh, it's just like in any other sport, football, football teams or baseball teams. They will play in their in their leagues uh, a team that not will not be just as uh, as great as they are. And it's the same thing in boxing. And. Uh, it may not be a tune-up fight. I may be using the wrong term here because you never know. He might be a sleeper. You can't tell. That's exactly right, Arthur. Uh, I myself, I never consider a fight a tune-up fight because the chances are just as, just as high in getting hurt, getting knocked out, or, you know, anything could happen. So you have to take the fight as though it's the biggest fight of your career. We'll follow Johnny Bumpus into his corner, fellas, as he gets the word from Lutuba. George Bennett is the other boy. Now, that hard jab that you hit him with, go right into his chest with it. Now, you ain't with it. It's easy now. I can see it. You know what I mean? So try it. So him to death. You understand? So now you got three spots. You got his body with the jab, you got his chest with the jab, and you got him in the head with the jab. See, now just keep the jab going. That, you're going to win with that. Then you're going to see the big left cross, right? But don't be anxious, you know, just keep on sticking and stabbing him, sticking him and stabbing him. Jab to the chest, body, and the head, Trick it, trick it, trick it. Second round. You understand? Now just stay defensive, just like you're doing. You know what I mean? Yeah. You're going you're gonna, you're gonna to wear him to death with the jab, now, now you're going to hit him with the left cross, okay? Now go to the chest with it, all right? So you heard the instructions from George Benton and Lou Duva as we go into round two, scheduled for ten. Johnny Bump City Bumpus, ranked number one in the world in the junior welterweight division. We told you about the Aaron Pryor situation. As far as the WBC, Steve Heron lost on September the 10th. Therefore, Bumpus uh, may have a shot at the WBC champion, Bruce Curry. But we were talking to him at the weigh-in, Rocky, this morning, and Bumpus told us his gut feeling is that he might actually get in the ring with Aaron Pryor, which would make for an intriguing matchup. Without a doubt, Steve, uh, Bumpus is looking particularly towards Aaron Pryor. He, he, he uh, Pryor hopefully won't avoid Bumpus, and then again, if he's talking retirement, he's not telling what the outcome may be. But Johnny Bump City Bumpus wants Aaron Pryor. George Benton gave very good instructions to Johnny. He said, keep jabbing him because he has a, a very effective jab, and then come across with the left cross. And apparently he must have a very effective left cross. Right, Rock? Without a doubt, Arthur. And he said to hit him right in the sternum, right in the solar plexus. That's where it hurts. Bumpus comes out of the corner in effective fashion. Bumpus is a fine-looking young man. He almost reminds me of that famous amateur, uh, Mark Breland. He's got that very nice, clean-cut look. Yes, yes, he does, Arthur. In fact, uh, a lot of people uh, say that uh, Johnny and uh, Mark uh, look uh, somewhat alike. Yeah, he is sweet, isn't he? Well, I guess most of the boxing fans out there have heard of Mark Breland. He's an outstanding amateur, and he's proved to be a very good actor, too, in the picture that he made. What was that, Lords of Discipline? Right, right. No, no, it was uh, Officer and a Gentleman, I believe it was. 
Well, anyway, we're surrounded I by... I don't believe so. We're don't surrounded by actors. We've got Burt Young. We're talking about Mark Freeland. And Rocky Lockridge is ready for the movies, too. I think it was Bad Boys. I think that was the name of the movie. Bad Boys, Arthur. We're going to have to get a... We're going to have to get a, a movie reviewer to sit in with us as well. It's no. getting crowded at this table. No, you can tell we don't go to the, we don't go to the movies. Well, we, we don't, don't have, have ten time. Fights. We don't have time. we got to watch some fights. I guess. Okay. Let's get Bert Young over here, if anybody knows. Let's head right home. Well, speaking of comparisons, a lot of people have compared Johnny Bumpus offensively to Sugar Ray Robinson and defensively to one of his trainers, George Fenton. That's not a bad company. That's uh, very understandable, Steve. Uh, in, in, in fact, uh, George Fenton concentrates basically on defense, and Sugar Ray Robinson, he lets his hands go from all angles. You can tell by the very, very stern look on Johnny Bumpus' face that he's not taking this lightly, as you said before, Rocky. No, every not. fight is a fight. You've got to, you've got to handle it that way. That's it for round two. Here's the Colombian okay. junior welterweight champion, Jose Angulo, taking his seat. 24 years of age at a Buena Ventura in Colombia. Esteban Garcia, Woody Larasso, do the talk. Mira, fíjate una cosa. Tienes que decidirte un poquito más. Trata de achicar la distancia, ¿ok? Es lo que está tratando de hacer. Mira, sobre la media distancia para afuera, él te quiere agarrar con él. There's a tremendous left, that, that's a tremendous right jab rather that Johnny Bumpus has been throwing all night. He's just leading up to that, uh, that left cross which he's going to throw up perhaps in this next round. Round three scheduled for ten. Johnny Bump, City Bump is wearing the white with the red blue trim. Jose Angulo wearing the white with the yellow blue and red trim. Very colorful uh, shorts, uh, but those are the colors of Colombia. I think Steve and Arthur that Bump City is. Uh come to the point to where he's warm and he's ready to get his thing off. He's ready to get his thing going. Rocky, I was just going to ask you for a translation from Angulo's corner. Can you handle that? <laughs> you know better than that, Steve. <laughs> I tell you, uh, looking at Johnny, he's, a, he's a, a masterful boxer. The way he bobs and weaves goes side to side. He's in very, very good balance. He's got just the right spread for his height. And uh, that, that, that's the display of punch power. He has punch power because of his being in balance. Very much so, Arthur. He's uh, not only an artistical fighter, but he puts them together and it makes it seem so much easier than it appears. He does make it look easy. Hit and not get hit. Was he a good athlete in school, in high school? Oh, without, a, without a doubt. We played basketball, football, did a little swim. We did a little, little everything athletically. How come you didn't let him in your band? <laughs> he couldn't sing. <laughs> well, nobody's perfect. Ricky Lockridge and the Ready Made Family. That was Rocky Lockridge's band back in Kokoma. Now, Lou Dover, George Benton, that you heard in the corner just a moment ago, they're very, very pleased in the way he's boxing. He's very, very effective tonight. And he's very, very stern and he's very serious. And he's building up to that left cross. It's going to come across, and there it was. Beautiful left hand. Midway through round three. Prior to throwing that left hand, Arthur, he doubled up on his right hand, which is a jab. I'd like to see him throw that right hook uppercut combination that he's famous for. That's his best punch, I understand. It ought to be coming anytime soon, Arthur. There's that jab by Johnny Bumpus. Crowd comes alive as Bumpus does. He's got an opponent in there that it's uh, Jose is not to be intimidated. He's right in the fight. And Bumpus is aware of that fact. Right, Arthur. He's not intimidated at all. He's taking everything that Bumpus is dishing out. And then again, uh, most fighters that make hungry. 
they well, can take quite a bit of punishment, and that makes that makes them come on even that much more. Angulo, no pushover. He had won 15 in a row prior to his last fight, losing a split decision to Eduardo Lugo. That was his first fight in the United States in Miami. Now that was a kind of a dangerous move here in the corner. They almost collided heads, and that's the thing that felt like Johnny has to watch. Johnny Bumpus ending with a hard right. So round three is complete. Let's take a look at some of the action. Not a bad jab on the part of Jose. He's right in the fight, as we said earlier, but... Bumpus is sharp tonight. He's as keen as can be. Keep your jab working. Keep your jab working. Don't get anxious. Now you see your left. You see your right hook. Yeah. Talked about that quickness earlier, Rocky. Let's take a look at an illustration. Yeah, that's the double jab that I spoke on early. He came back with the left hand. I'm surprised he didn't come back to the uh, to the body with the combination. He will. Just keep fighting him. Settle down. And when you see the shot, let it go. Right. Round, Johnny. See because. You get so damn anxious sometimes, the guy sees it, you know, it back, you understand? So no one's going to get anxious, just box, 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 right? Johnny's very calm, as you know, you see that? Very calm. He listens intently. He's a good student. You can obviously tell, Arthur, that he's well conditioned. He's not breathing. He's not gasping for air or anything like that. He's just ready to go to work. He's got a great body, but that JB, is that being JB Scotch on there? Or Johnny uh, no. Bumpus? What is that? Uh, you know better, Arthur. Come on, Arthur. <laughs> Round four, scheduled for ten. Bump City, Johnny Bumpus, in control. Johnny Bumpus retreats very well, too. He'll get in, do his job, and retreat out, and they get set again, and then comes in. Boy, look at how he flicks that jab out. It is just lightning quick. He's carrying it rather low now. Why is that, Rock? Well, uh, most fighters uh, that are handled or trained by Georgie Benton, uh, they've known him to carry his uh, his lead hand low, so uh, therefore it kind of grows on the fighters that he trains. Well, does that make it right? Uh, to a certain point, Arthur, but I, I hold my uh, my lead hand a little low, and uh, it's been right for me. I've learned from it uh, in one particular fight that I've been in, but then again, it's been to my advantage that uh, I worked well off of having that uh, lead hand low. Well, it's also a restful position, right? Yes, it is. And you stay far away enough to rest them when you're ready to go you put you bring it up and go in you definitely have to know that much arthur right johnny bumpus continues to measure out jose angulo and sticks him with that right missed with a right uppercut even though Johnny Bump City's uh, lead hand is his right, uh, I'm working Arthur and Steve on my jab being just as devastating as Johnny Bump City. He has well, a tremendous jab. He's very consistent with it also. Oh, and that right just got in there. It penetrated to the head of Jose Angulo. He had a pretty good jab in Las Vegas against uh, Boza Edwards, Rock. Thank you much, Arthur. The eyes. Check out the eyes of Angulo. They're very glazed, very bloodshot. You know, when we interviewed him today, Steve, I had noticed that. I don't know why. Well, of course, he uh, he came from a long distance here. He has the red eye. <laughs> In addition, the effect of bump is his punches. Have to be wearing Angulo down. But let me tell you something. He's doing very, very well. Jose Angulo is in the fight. He's not out of the fight. And he's not afraid, as we said before. He, you see, notice he keeps leading. He keeps pushing the fight. Exactly, Arthur. I couldn't agree with you more. He's there. He's giving it all that he has in terms of not being on the end of everything that Bumpus is throwing, but at times he is at most. Yeah, I would say he's the aggressor at this point. Ineffective aggressor, but he's, he's in there. He's trying. More than anything, I would say that he has plenty of heart. Yes. And I'm impressed with the defensive tactics of Johnny Bumpus as well. Very elusive. Just love the way Johnny blocks those punches. I mean, he just does it so quickly with a flip of the hand. That'll do it for round four. Let's look in on Jose Angulo. Angulo. Mm. ¿Estás consciente de lo que estás haciendo? Sí, profe. Ok, ok, perfecto. Mira, entonces, ¿sabes una cosa? Échame el agua. Échame el agua. Well, they're pretty happy. You heard perfecto. That I understood. Now, there's that jab, but of course he missed. But notice the defense on, on Johnny, the way he blocks everything. He's got his arms up when he's in the corner. He doesn't get hit. 
He's very, very elusive. He backs up at the right time, and he comes back with effective right jabs. That was rather low on the part of Jose, however. Angulo's just a little too wild, and he's, uh, he's not firmly implanted on the canvas. He's off balance slightly, right, Rock? Yes, he is, Arthur. Cerca de él y la guardia bien alta. Presiona un poco más. Round five, scheduled for ten. I think I actually heard Woody Larisso say, apply a little more pressure, if I translated that correctly. But Bumpus is doing the apply. And you are right, observing that, because he is applying more pressure, but he's getting hit as he's going in. He is getting tagged by Johnny Bump City. There was that right hook uppercut he threw, and he tagged him right in the chin. I think that combination left right then, Arthur and Steve had, uh, had Angulo off his feet. He was stunned momentarily. And if you notice, he's holding on a little, and he's a little wobbly right at this point. Not only that, but the right eye of Angulo looks like it's beginning to close. In addition to that speed that Johnny Bump City is utilizing, he's also power punching behind it. I think it's going to take its toll real quick. I am very, very, in my whole 40 years of ring, I've never seen a right jab on a southpaw like he has. So crisp. Look at that. Come on, get close and punch. There's that left, followed by a right by Bumpus. That was the left cross. You caught it right in time, Steve. Jack Clayton lets him go. Well, you can, you've got to let them go and unless they're in a clinch and they're tied up, then you can break. But not if the hands are free, you cannot break them. The eyes of Angulo are as red as the stripes on his trunks. And he's missing with those jabs, Angulo is, but Bumpus comes right back. Johnny seems to have him at will now. And he's really giving Jose a little boxing lesson, but he keeps coming back. There he's it is. Down. He's right above us. Angulo goes Three. down. It's about that time, I would believe, he was hitting Angulo with everything but the kitchen sink. Yeah, he started to wobble when we noticed that that was the beginning of it. All right, he gets up at eight. First now we have to watch the left cross. I'm going to look towards uh, beautiful uh, combinations from Bump City because he knows the time has come to where one combination, one good connecting combination will end it. And the mistake now that Jose is making is he's staying on the inside. He ought to back off. He dances well enough to stay on the outside to get a rest. Well, Angulo with a lot of heart hangs right in there and now moves forward against Bumpus. Johnny missed with a, a, a very fast left cross, but he's trying to get it across. Missed with a left hook, did Bumpus. Angulo's right eye is totally swollen now. If he gets a pretty good shot there, it would be wide open. You see, like I spoke on before, uh, Steve and Arthur, the more punishment that he's taking, the hungry he gets. The more ground he takes up coming at Bump City. So that is it for round number five. We'll take a look at some action from the fifth round as Johnny Bump City Bump is unloaded on Jose Angulo. It's just about that time, and Rocky was right that he's going to unload because he's worked him up beautifully just for this point. The doctor is in the ring now looking at Angulo. And again, I must say that it's good timing. The doctor should be in there looking at him. From another angle. He's taking quite a pounding, uh, Arthur, Steve. Uh, in fact, I'm surprised that he hadn't gone down early. Yeah. It's just a question of time now, uh, Rock. They're doing the right thing, applying a lot of ice to that right eye. The doctor has spoken to Zach Clayton and says, Zach, be very, very careful on this next round. Wonder people had problems getting out of the corner, and Zach Clayton had to practically throw him out. Round six, scheduled for ten. It's been all Bump City Bumpus, the number one ranked junior welterweight in the world, who is looking for Aaron Pryor. Bump looks very, very smooth, very cool. Just got a lot of perspiration from working hard. 
Another thing I'd like to uh, bring out is the fact that uh, a lot of people have been underestimating Johnny Bump City's uh, punching ability. But as time goes on, he's getting stronger and stronger. And uh, it's quite factual, both Steve and uh, Arthur, that uh, he's getting stronger and stronger as time goes on. Yeah, but you can't include me in that group because I'm very, very fond, very high of his boxing ability, really. He's a real student of boxing. Well, he's got 15 knockouts amongst his 20 victories, including a victory over a fellow named Fireball Rodriguez, which gave him the USBA title. I was talking to Sugar Ray Leonard the other day. He said Fireball gave him, Sugar Ray, his hardest fight ever. Well, Steve, we ought to remind the, the uh, viewing public that... Uh, Johnny Bumpus has beaten in the amateurs Boom Boom Mancini, Randy Shields, uh, Melvin Paul, and Milton McCrory. Some of the, some of the most uh, top contingental fighters out, the, out uh, in the uh, professional rankings today. He floored Michael Solid Gold Bradley six times. But his last fight, an eight-round KO over Nani Marrero. Johnny Bumpus continues to do his thing against the Colombian junior welterweight king, Jose Angulo. I tell you, Angulo is very, very game, but that eye is affecting him. Angulo is now starting to throw his left cross, which, of course, southpaws are noted for. Under a minute, remaining round six. He connected with that left cross that he threw, Arthur, but apparently it didn't have anything on it. Bumpus wasn't phased by it at all. Very puffy around the right eye of Jose Angulo. Yeah, but I tell you, Angulo is landing now, and this is just starting to surprise me a little bit. Well, you can't go through a fight, Rocky, without being hit. You know that, right? You without a doubt. <laughs> without a doubt, right? Big sweeping right hook that uh, Angulo was able to duck under. Steve, you notice he has the strangest looking eyes. They're almost pink. Blood shot. Oh, a connection on a combination by Bumpus. I'm surprised uh, Johnny Bump City hasn't started working uh, what we what we concentrate on in the gym, which is called dead weight. He hasn't uh, applied it as of yet. Well, he continues to apply the leather to the head of Jose Angulo. Let's go over to Dick Landis with some further analysis. Dick? Okay, gentlemen, thanks very much. Uh, I don't want to overwhelm our boxing fans out there with commentators, but I would like to say we have some contrast tonight. There was the Sears-Brown fight, which was not beautiful. But this fight, you're seeing some boxing. You're seeing a master boxer with all the respect in the world for a relatively unknown fighter. For all we know, Bumpus could be fighting prior in that ring tonight. He's class all the way. And also, gentlemen, I'll try to have a movie review ready on the next fight, okay? <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Dick. Let's take a look at that classic combination of Bump City Bumpus. He blocked that right jab beautifully, came back with a left jab. And look at the way he the way he just defends himself, Bumpus. That's a guess. It's an art form. Okay, let's go. Stay on the move. Stay on the move, right? Looking good, Bob. Looking good. Very fresh, very confident Johnny Bumpus in the round seven. He faces Jose Angulo, scheduled for ten. We are very pleased to be joined by the number three rated Rocky Lockridge. I don't like the way Jose went to his corner in the last round. He wobbled to his round, and it could be coming to an end very soon. It speaks for itself, Arthur. The accumulation of punches that he's taken from Johnny Bump City Bump is, is taking its toll. Oh, there's that right by Bumpus connecting to the head of Angulo. You can hear that one in the back row was a thumper. Jose's eye is almost totally closed now. Oh, look at this! Bumpus got down! Yes, he did. He caught Bumpus with his left hand. That's only the second time in his pro career he's been down. Yeah, but it was a flash knockdown, but it was a knockdown. It was right on the chin. But very, Bumpus, very, very flash indeed. A flash knockdown if it was a knockdown. Some people are saying it was a slip. Come on. It was not a slip. And as we said earlier, uh, every fight is a fight and you approach it that way. Without a doubt, Arthur. We, we thought that uh, Angelo wasn't giving up any ground and uh, the more punishment he was taking, the more he was coming at Bumpus. You said that earlier. 
I'll tell you what, whether it was a knockdown or a slip, it's got to give Angulo confidence. Uh, that was a, no, that was a clean knockdown, no doubt about it. Bumpus is, looks a little shy now. He's backing off. And he respects, he respects Jose very much now. Yes, yes, he does, Arthur. So things are getting very interesting here in round seven. We haven't seen Bumpus back up at all in the fight until this very moment. The glazed, bloodshot eyes of Jose Angulo piercing into Johnny Bump City Bumpus. Angulo's getting quite hasty with that left hand. He's uh, he's caught uh, Johnny Bump City once, twice, and three times with that left hand. You know, you know, he does realize that he's behind in this fight, and he's good, making a desperate attempt to uh, to give everything he has to, to try to knock him out. And Angulo just winding up with that left, but missing. Bumpus measures him out with the right jab. It was a very effective right jab, right on the face, and it's getting on. There's a left cross. Bumpus opening up to the face of Angulo in that last sequence. Bumpus. As we head for the bell. Sits down. Listen. You're moving around. Johnny Bumps' his right eye is swollen. Give me the Just swing your hook. See the guy's walking right into the hook. Like when you're moving around, just swing the hook on it. You understand? Yeah. He's walking right into it. Now listen. As you're moving, you'll see it. Like when you move again, just swing the hook in like a little, a little teeny bit. Well, whatever it was, a slip or a knockdown, we're going to take another look. Swing the hook. He's walking right into it. It was a tremendous left uppercut right to the chin and knocked him right down on the seat of his pants. Yes, it was. Uh, it appeared earlier that it was a straight left hand, but apparently we saw that it was a left uppercut. Now here's Bumpus being backed up. Let the hook pull you, you understand? And you'll see it. You understand? Let that hook pull you around. You'll nail it with it. You understand? Scheduled for 10, it's become a, a bit on the dramatic side. As Johnny Bumpus was knocked down, now Zach Clayton waved it off as if it were a slip, but from our vantage point, it looked like a knockdown, especially in that replay. Now, is this something that really is quite, quite interesting? Both of their right eyes are swollen. And of course, as they're both southpaws, as we said, and they're being banged with the left hand, the left cross is doing that. The left hand is the real fact is that both their swellings on their right eye Exactly right, Arthur. And like I said earlier in that last round, uh, and Angolo had connected two and three times with that left hand. Angolo, a very game opponent here for Johnny Bumpus. I think he's a lot better than Bumpus had anticipated. Well, that's the way it is in boxing. You will never know. You can't take any match lightly. You know, you never can really anticipate how good a fighter is because he could be a, a, a very good fighter early going. He could be even better in the latter round. Continues, yes. Bumpus continues to land to the head of Jose Angulo, who can take it. Now, we observed a moment ago that Bumpus is backing up, and he's backing up now. And Jose is just momentarily taking the play away from him. Well, there have been two knockdowns in this fight. Angulo went down to the count of eight. A flash knockdown as Bumpus went down in the last round. This is round eight. Bumpus is still headstrong at this point. I'm not saying that his head has gotten any big because Anguilla has been applying pressure. But what I'm saying is that he's still in control to what he's doing and he's counter-reacting everything that Angola does. Great exchange right there. It's been furious. There's an overhand left. Here goes Bumpus. Bumpus is on the attack now and he almost has him. He's wobbling. Oh, what a right by Bumpus. Flush of the face of Angola. Try to fight back. What a flurry by Bumpus. I think Bumpus might be saying to himself that it's getting a little rough. I'm ready to call it a night. Get it over with. And it, indeed, he has to be wondering what's it going to take to floor this guy. Yeah, he, he's 
being frustrated too, just like Sears was in the previous fight. It seems as though he's going to have to come up with the kitchen sink to get rid of this guy. He's one tough hombre, I'll tell you that. Look at Angulo stay on his feet, although a bit on the wobbly side. Who wouldn't be after that? Those right hooks are tremendous on the part of Bumpus. The way he comes across with that left cross. Oh, two and three combo together with Andy. And they end it toe-to-toe -to -toe in the center of the ring. Round eight is history. Todo estuvo muy bien, nada más que me estás dejando descubierta la guardia, ¿ok? No me descubro la guardia. Let's take a look at uh, some of that activity from the eighth round. Johnny Bumpus realizes he's in a fight. It's a, like a desperation on his part. He wants to get him out of there, and he can't understand what's keeping him up. What a tremendous right cross uppercut that was. Mostly a right cross. Beautiful. He can certainly take it. Jose can take all that head punishment, and he keeps retaliating. He keeps coming back. Round nine scheduled for ten. That was a pulsating right dished out by Johnny Bumpus. Incredible that we go to round nine. Bumpus' eye is really quite swollen, almost closed. What they need there is that end swell. I don't know whether they were using that end swell or not. That's like a little iron that just takes out the uh, swelling from the tissue. Well, let's see if they can pick up where they left off in round eight. It was just French. Crowd pleaser here at the same. The eye's not going to discourage Bumpus at all. He's, he's had his eye swollen up before, once and twice before, I'm sure. But then again, he knows at this point that two and three punch combination would end it. And I'm sure at this point he wants to get it over with. There's a sweeping right hook by Bumpus. He's still as sharp as he was early, and he's even stronger as he was. You know, I tell you, that was a good point you made because he's still very effective. His combinations are sharp and crisp. Without a doubt, like I spoke earlier, Stephen Arthur, he's still headstrong. He still knows what he's doing. Oh, there's no question about that. He hasn't been hurt at all, except for that flash knockdown. He recovered very quickly, got right up. But by the same token, his opponent tonight, Angulo, has to be in tip-top condition to bear the front of this punishment. Another hard right by Bumpus. That was one of the best right rights of the fight. Ferocious. But Angulo remains up. He certainly can take it, Steve. Yep. I like to dwell on the fact that I said Bumpus is becoming a very powerful puncher. And uh, then again, I'm not going to take his boxing ability away from him, Arthur, because I know you like that better than anything. And I know he's going to continue to be the best boxer that he can possibly be. Well, you're, you're very right, but you also have to give an awful lot of credit to Angulo because he can take a tremendous amount of punishment and come back at you. Without a doubt, Arthur, let's give credit where credit is due. There's another solid right hook by Bumpus. Look at that Angoli. He's still in that fight. He's just coming in all the time. He can take anything that Bumpus is giving him so far. Uh, 40 seconds remaining in the ninth round, scheduled for 10. The right hook by Bumpus connecting to Angulo's head. I tell you, Angulo got progressively better as the rounds went on. Yes, he has, Arthur. In, in fact, uh, like uh, I spoke on earlier, he's not giving up any ground now. He's, the more punishment he has been taking, the more he has been coming on. And John Ree is wondering how he can take this punishment. Must be in his mind. That double, that double right and that uh, left hand by Johnny Bump City, that combination. If he went to the body or came back to the top with something else, I'm sure he would have ended it. Well, there's no doubt he's trying. That's it for round nine as we close in on Johnny Bumpus. Okay, you know that? Yeah, you see that hook? Get it on. Huh? Yeah. Okay. Now have your hands up good. And when you see that dead going left cross of his come, drop down away from it. You understand what I mean? Got your hands up good and high. These guys are still punching good and fast. You understand? Last round, baby. Come right back to the fast combination. You don't lay nothing out there. Let's put it out there fast. 
slow down. Don't slow know. down. Don't slow those punches up now. Come on. How you feel? Okay now? Oh, okay. Now just keep on sticking and stabbing him. And just try him with that hook. See? Hey, John. Yeah. But don't get okay. slow. If you touch him with the hook, come back with the left cross. See? See the man? Come on. Okay, John? Yeah. Okay. All right, now let me see you go. Now, come on, baby. All right, now have your hands up good and high. Don't run in or nothing. Don't make no mistakes out there. Now, you understand? You're about to get damn good. Okay, let's last go. Come on, last round now. Let's go. Final round, round number 10, Johnny Bumpus, Jose Angulo, touch gloves in the center of the ring, and here we go. What an interesting fight. What a great, interesting spectator fight, really. I don't think there's any question who is uh, in front in points, but I don't think Bumpus ever thought that he'd be in with such a game fighter as Jose Angulo. And it's very, very rare that you will see two good southpaws, and neither two good southpaws. That's exactly right, Arthur. And uh, then again, uh, Steve, I wouldn't, I wouldn't doubt it for a moment that uh, Bumpus uh, had no idea that this guy was as tough as he is. I agree with that statement. He just keeps coming in. He's he's, a, he's the aggressor right now in the tenth round. I'm sure Johnny Bump City feels that he's way ahead, but that doesn't mean that he's going to give up on any ground. Heavy right by Bumpus landed. Most of his punches are landing, and we are truly amazed at ringside at Jose Angulo able to hang in there. Let me tell you, Johnny has an awful lot of power. He's displaying that. He's very, very effective in his punch power. But it only tells me one thing, that this guy can take an awful lot of punishment. There it is. There has been a tremendous amount of, uh, of exchanges and devastating blows among the two uh, from about the fifth round up until this point. It almost looks choreographed as in the Rocky movies. Appropriately, Burt Young on hand here tonight is David Sears. Man. I'd like to make a point right now that this has been a very, very good fight for Johnny in view of the fact that he's going to be fighting a champion maybe within the next uh, 90 days or four or five months from now. This has been a very good fight for him. Very much so, Arthur. In fact, I'm sure that uh, the public that uh, appeared here at the uh, Sands Hotel Casino tonight on this particular car had underestimated the ability of the opponent that Bumpus was in with tonight. There's a right! A tremendous! Bumpus. Tremendous! Now it's over. That's, that's right. I agree with that 100%. Angulo hanging I agree against with the that. ropes. It was a very good stoppage. Up above us. And Johnny Bumpus remains undefeated. Johnny Bumpus now 21-0, 16 knockouts, but it wasn't easy. Uh, you see what that was, Stephen Arthur? It was it was a combination of about four or five punch. Four or five punches. That's right. And he was in a position where he could have been hurt and was stopped properly at the right time. Without a doubt. And the doctor is in there now, and the doctor is in there for a reason. And he is swollen, both eyes, and fighters are valiant, Rocky, as you know, and they never, you know, show that they want to give up. Right. Well, we'll take a look at some of that action here at the end of the fight. He was on the attack all the way then. You could see how wobbly he was. He's defenseless at this point, and Zach was very, very timely in stopping the fight there. It was definitely a five-punch combination that ended it. Just a succession of blows by Johnny Bumpus to the head of Jose Angulo. It was a tremendous show for the fans here at the Sands Hotel. Very entertaining fight. And as you uh, pointed out, Rocky, at times just toe-to-toe -to -toe and outstanding exchanges. Up to Ed Derry. Ladies and gentlemen, referee Zach Clayton stops this bout at two minutes and two seconds of the 10th round, and a winner by a TKO and still undefeated, Johnny Bump City Bumpus. Bumpus. Well, I know one person who is very, very happy, a man sitting between us, Rocky Lockridge, longtime friend of Johnny Bumpus, 
see his pal go to 21 and 0, 16 knockouts, and uh, really uh, on the threshold of a championship fight. No question, Steve. I know it was made to order. He was he was ready. He's always conditioned, and he's ready to perform. Well, you two young men must be very very proud. You had a great victory in Las Vegas against uh, Bose Edwards, and now here we go, uh, Johnny Bumpus. Another great victory for him. He was a very, very tough opponent. And Lou Duva, really on the verge of a champion. He's got a whole stable of them, including this man, Johnny Bumpus, and the man to our left, Rocky Lockridge. So it's going to be interesting to see what happens in the coming weeks in terms of Bumpus and a possible matchup with the champion, Aaron Pryor, the champion of the WBA, or the champ of the BC, Bruce Curry. I have to take my hat off, really, to Jose Angulo. He, a tremendous fighter, could take a lot of punishment, but he could give a lot of it also. His record now 16 and 3. Once again, a reminder coming up on October the 27th, our next edition of Super Fights of the Month. Unbeaten heavyweight Pinklin Thomas and former light heavyweight champion Mike Rossman on the comeback trail. Hope you can be with us. Right now, let's go over to Dick Landis with Johnny Bumpus and company. Okay, okay, thanks very much, gentlemen. Johnny Bumpus, undefeated. Uh, a very game fighter you were up against tonight. Let me ask you right off, did you get stung in the seventh? Uh, I'm not sure what round it was, but I got stung. Uh, he was throwing that, he started throwing that left hand late, and I was carrying my right hand a little low, and he caught me a couple times with it. Well, I'll tell you, you're class all the way. Hi, Debbie. It's good to see you. Lou, let's clarify right off the bat, what's the story as far as a world championship fight is concerned? He's number one in the WBA. That's Pryor. He's number one WBC, which is Bruce Curry. We're waiting to fight either one of them. Danny will be back from vacation this week, and I hope that he can sit down and negotiate with both parties and try and bring about a title fight before the end of the year. Thank you, Lou, Debbie, and Johnny. Let's go back to Stephen Arthur. Gentlemen. All right, thank you, Dick, and we'd like to 